The representation of queer communities is also central to the work of Camilo Godoy, an artist and educator based in New York. Behind me, you'll see a wallpaper adaption of one of the photographs from his zine Amix, which is published annually. While we are, so, we are also showcasing three editions of the zine in the display case. But I think we can also hear more from Camilo himself. Welcome. Um, hi, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Camilo. I'm zooming in from New York. Uh, and thank you all for just making time on this uh, Wednesday to learn and talk about art and hair and the politics that engage those practices. Uh, also, special thanks to uh, Tomas, Miriam, uh, Matilda, and Clara for organizing, and everyone at the museum who makes all of this possible. Um, I will be sharing my screen and just talking through uh, a couple of slides of uh, my work. And uh, I'll just start with where we were just uh, seeing my work in the installation of the exhibition. Uh, where we have this uh, wall size uh, image uh, from my zine Amigekis and uh, the relationship between the printed photograph and the large scale photograph is something that uh, for the last few years I've been uh, interested in exploring how a photograph can uh, push you away uh, by its scale, but also how a photograph can pull you in by how small it might be. And um, this is a photograph uh, that is of two of my friends and partners um, and dancers, uh, Ricardo and Orlando. And it was a photograph that I, I wanted to make since I first met them. Uh, they are long-term partners and also uh, people who uh, are living with HIV in the United States and much of their practice as dancers and choreographers, uh, especially in their company Brotherhood Dance, is situated in this uh, place of uh, speaking on the legacy of uh, queerness, but also the legacy of so many artists, but in particular artists of color who died of complications to AIDS in the 80s and 90s. Um, and so um, the idea of kissing is something that was very particular for me to highlight. Um, and the way that um, campaigns against uh, kissing uh, during the AIDS crisis were promoted to fear monger uh, and uh, consider how saliva could potentially be uh, and misinform uh, uh, in uh, the spread of HIV. And so this photograph to me, when I was thinking of it, was largely uh, considering how um, people within collectives such as Grand Fury were creating campaigns that said kissing doesn't kill, uh, greed uh, and misinformation does. Um, and this photograph, as I mentioned, um, is part of uh, this zine uh, title Amigekigs, which is the gender inclusive uh, form for friends in Spanish. And it derives and it's inspired by uh, this uh, publication that I found and bought in the East Village here in New York City uh, when I was about 20, 21 years old, and I was completely um, in awe by uh, the photographs in this publication that's undated and its title, Amigo, which is the <clears throat> male form for friend in Spanish, and was drawn by the language in the publication that says adults only studies in the male nude. Um, this publication uh, made most likely between the 1950s and 1960s, is sort of like early forms of erotica, of male erotica and sort of queer publishing practices of this period that created a variety of ways for people to communicate and come together through photography, but also through publishing. Um, and so in 2017, I uh, had the a residency that gave me the resources to uh, essentially start this project, um, Amigekigs, uh, which takes on the similar form in terms of scale and in terms of um, uh, tone of black and white. Um, and I wanted to really expand this notion of friend 
um, and friendship and consider my own community here in New York uh, in terms of queer communities. And Amiguet Kiggs uh, with the X uh, references a couple of um, politics, in particular uh, addresses the idea of intersections and how the X can be seen as an intersection of identities <clears throat> and experiences and uh, political uh, beliefs. Uh, but also the X as a uh, symbol of crossing something out, crossing something um, in terms of rejecting and subverting a particular narrative. And at the same time, the X as a way to reference uh, Latinx, which is a way in which in the United States, uh, Latino or Latina, which are very gendered uh, forms of the Spanish language, are used by um, Latinx activists or people of Latin American descent to uh, include and be far more inclusive about identities within uh, this category. And I also think of the X in um, conversation with uh, a Black radical tradition as expressed by folks within the Nation of Islam, in particular Malcolm X and the way that the X was used in the 60s and 70s within uh, Black radical uh, communities in the United States in particular to reject uh, white supremacist ideas about naming, in particular last names. Um, and so Amigeki derives from that and the photographs are um, a variety of images that are very much uh, celebrating lust and friendship um, and intimacy. Um, most of the people in these photographs are very uh, dear friends or lovers in some instances. And in terms of hair, obviously these uh, three front covers that we see of these three first issues of the uh, publication, which are also in view in the exhibition, um, relate uh, so many of the ideas about uh, hair that have been uh, discussed uh, earlier by um, other participants in such uh, deep and theoretical and critical ways. Um, and I'll just walk through a couple of the photographs um, and the way that I was thinking about them in terms of myself as the photographer, but also the publisher um, of this work, and the way that I see many of these images as um, standings for referencing a very rich um, art historical legacy of uh, image making. Um, this photograph uh, of my friend Joshua Allen, who's uh, non-binary um, activist and writer and also image maker. Uh, for me, uh, I was really uh, drawn to the desire to highlight um, their hairstyle, but also uh, the form in which they're posing in this uh, nude. Uh, that um, cites a variety of uh, references to hermaphrodite, for example, in sculpture or even painting. Uh, this photograph was made in Brooklyn in 2019, just before the pandemic, um, and is the centerfold of um, issue number three. Uh, and some of the photographs from uh, the zine have existed primarily as uh, a published printed matter object, uh, but also, um, as we saw in the exhibition currently in Essen, as a large scale uh, print on the wall, uh, but also in New York as a billboard. And uh, to for me, it's uh, important to think about how these images can traffic through multiple spaces, uh, both in the private domain, but also in the public domain, such as the street, uh, to also highlight the ways in which uh, specific queer artists in the 1980s and 90s uh, whether it was from collectives such as Fierce Pussy or Grand Fury or uh, Group Material um, or <clears throat> artists like Barbara Kruger or Feliz Gonzalez Torres use the billboard um, and the public space as a way to intervene and bring in a politics of um, subversive ideas related to the body, uh, related to um, the epidemic of the AIDS crisis, uh, but also to homosexuality and queerness. Uh, so this billboard was on view in Midtown Manhattan uh, for about two months in 2017 of a self-portrait with uh, Brandon, Carlos, and Jorge, this intimate um, sort of image of lust, um, also presented in different venues as a large-scale venue uh, printed image. Uh, and then I'll just talk about some of these photographs, uh, these portraits of other artists and friends, such as um, the uh, writer and performer uh, based here in New York, uh, Justin Allen, uh, in the intimacy of his bedroom, uh, celebrating his beard. Uh, and 
uh, also these types of images of these close-ups of my own um, body in relation to other bodies, uh, in particular the testicles um, of a friend. Um, and I'll just end with this image of uh, Mike Funk and um, the relationship between uh, transgender identity and hair, but also uh, nudity and presentation. Um, and the way that uh, testosterone um, allows for um, this hormonal uh, shift in the transformation of gender by uh, my funk, uh, a poet uh, based in New York, um, writing a lot about the intersection of transgender and transmasculine identity. Um, so with that, I'll just um, end and uh, express my deep gratitude and love for everybody who's uh, been participating in this symposium. Um, and look forward to other um, presentations. Thank you.